We're here in Missoula, Montana with Carol and Nancy Fields O'Connor, who are both in Missoula at this homecoming, 82, for the dedication and the groundbreaking, I should say, of the new Fine Arts Radio TV uh, building. And they have both been very instrumental in getting this project off the ground, and now they're here for the culmination of that project. And you have a Montana bug on your nose. Montana bug, all right. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. as long as it isn't a tick. <laughs> Carol, I know that you worked with Dr. Uh, Bucklew initially in doing some promotion for, for the Fine Arts uh, Radio TV building. What do you well, feel? Well, there was a mailing campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, letters went out to all the alumni of the university, and, uh, and I wrote that letter, and uh, uh, it, was, it was sent out over uh, our signatures, Nancy's right. and mine, so mm -hmm. it, uh, that's what we did. And uh, we also gave them some dough, didn't we? What a we, bet. we did indeed. <laughs> you did. But, uh, Tell them how much we gave it. Everybody wants to know how much, so say how much. Well, we gave. Uh, there goes a big. Uh, <laughs> folks, there's a lumbering. <laughs> if you're wondering about the uh, the uh, sound effects here, a lumbering truck All just right, went over. Carol, the, <laughs> we gave um, twenty thousand apiece mm -hmm. to that building. I think that it's important to know that uh, Sister Catherine. Uh, not the twenty thousand pesos, friends. That's American dollars. <laughs> 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 well, pesos wouldn't go very far these days. Anyway, I think it's fair to say that Sister Catherine Martin, who's the Dean of the School of Fine Arts, uh, has been a friend of ours for many years. And um, she and I always look for ways to see one another and enjoy one another. And uh, this seemed to be a very good thing. So we had a lot of conversation over the years about our desire for this building. It's gone on before this time, though. I mean, we've talked about a fine arts building mm -hmm. at the university since I was a student here a right. few years ago. <laughs> now, were you in the fine arts when you were a student here, Nancy? Yes. Uh -huh. I, I immediately right. knew what I wanted and, to do. And that's how you met Nancy, was when you were both in drama classes here at the university, Carol? Yeah, that's right. We both m members of the uh, Maskers, which was the dramatic group and still is here. And uh, I did a play, and Nancy was working on the play, and that's how we met. Now, the play that you wrote and produced here, was that the very first play that you ever wrote? I th it's so long ago. I think it, I think it was. I Has it, it been was. produced since it was produced here in Missoula? No. Um, <laughs> it was a kind of a, a prophetic little play in a way. It was about some IRA activity in the north of Ireland. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was ahead of its time. Unfortunately, now it's behind its time. Okay. So. Uh, you know, a lot of people re uh, remember you uh, when you were traveling the state in Othello. What was the part you played in that play? I, I played Othello. You played Othello. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, have you done very much Shakespeare over the years uh, before you got so well identified with the character of Archie? No, I'm not very fond of uh, uh, Shakespeare, so I haven't sought the opportunity to do any. And uh, I, I think the Brooklyn accent would make it tough to do it. Is, is that ever gotten in the way when you did it before? The, the accent? <laughs> oh, sure. My Brooklyn accent, she thinks. Well, you he think you hear a Brooklyn accent now? I really do. Well, well a New York no. accent. No. Let's see. Now, let's talk no, about no, Othello, no, okay? No, okay. Let's talk a little bit about Othello, Carol, and when you toured the state in that play. Do you like to do Shakespeare? No, I'm not uh, very fond of uh, uh, Shakespeare. Uh, one or two of the plays appeal to me, and I, I try to see them when the great actors are in them. but. Uh, I prefer Moliere, in fact, uh -huh. um, as, as an actor, you know. <laughs> All right. We want to talk a little bit about accents. As Archie Bunker, what would you call his accent? Well, his, his accent is uh, uh, Queens, on the border of Queens and Brooklyn. And, uh, he lives in Astoria. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in Astoria sound like Archie. <laughs> All right. Now, Nancy, as a lady that's lived with this gentleman for a long time, how would you qualify his accent, if he has one? Well, his accent, as he's speaking to you now, is an accent that um, is necessary for the profession that he is in, one that he um, has always used since, you know, if I would say for 30, you mean 35 years. I'm just talking in a normal, normal way. Yeah, I'm not I know, but there are a few, there are a few words and all that, that you have consciously changed because it, it simply was the way to get work in Dublin. They said you sound too American. He neutralized his accent somewhat and from then on worked. And you mentioned Dublin. I think you find that of most actors, most well known actors who, okay. who can do parts of many areas, which Carol can. Now you both went to Ireland, did you not? And Carol and went first uh -huh. to Ireland 
and uh, wanted me to join him and I said I will as soon as I have my degree. Uh -huh. And so after I was graduated from the university. And did you perform there as well? I did and I worked at the Abbey as a scene designer and I performed in Variety. And have you and, pursued uh, your theatrical career uh, after you returned to this country? I did during the first, uh, oh, first part of our time in New York. I worked on Broadway and off Broadway and in winter stock and some summer stock, but mostly since All in the Family, I have not pursued too much. <laughs> I, I hope to do it in the future, but I've had a lot of other things that take my time. You bet. Such as fundraising for the University of Montana, <laughs> a few other things okay. like that. How do you explain the very excellent um, success of Archie's Place and the transition that you've been able to make from All in the Family? I have no explanation to offer. Now, you have just recently finished the taping for about a third of the season, yeah. Carol. Uh, what can you say about Archie's Place, and what can we look forward to this season? Well, he's the same old guy, stumbling along, trying to make his way. He, he's a widower, and he's got these uh, two uh, 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 girls to raise, in a way. Got them around the house, and he's got all, all the problems that he makes himself. And anything can happen. <laughs> Do you have direct input into the stories, and do you get involved in the directing as well? Oh, yes. I'm em employed not only as the uh, leading actor on the show, but I'm employed as one of the writers, and uh, so I have as much input into the writing as anybody else. In these plays that you have just taped, would you say your influence has, has been very dearly felt in these first ones you've finished? The uh, All of us writers uh, plan the season together mm -hmm. and we look over each other's work together so we uh, we're all kind of on an equal an equal footing in, in, the, in the creative side do you think that's what keeps it fresh for you to have this other challenge along with just the acting and the interpretation of the role what keeps it fresh is mainly the money <laughs> <laughs> okay but this is a chance to give kind of a commercial for the university of montana and some of the training that you both got while you were going to school here in montana uh, all right you first carol and then we'll have nancy do the same the uh, well in a university theater situation i i think the best that a university theater can do for you is uh, is uh, get you accustomed to uh, performing somehow or another in front of audiences. Um, there's just not enough time to learn all one has to learn to come out of a university and be able to step into the uh, world of professional acting. But it uh, gets the kids up there, it gets them uh, performing, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, teaches them a little bit to handle their fears. And uh, that, uh, that's the, But if it does that much, it's doing a lot. You bet. Okay, Nancy, how about the background that it gave you going, coming from this school? Well, I think that uh, even before the school, I think uh, there was a certain quality and ingredient in Missoula that uh, nurtured and totally encouraged me. I felt uh, complete confidence and love from this community. And um, I somehow, whether it be brazen, ignorant, or just whatever it is, I somehow carry that strength into any situation that I go into, mm -hmm. whether it's in theater or in life. I always see those dear faces in Missoula saying, you're great, Nance, and so that's a big encouragement to me. Were you in me. high school drama as well? Yes. In grade school? Grade school. <laughs> I was, uh, I was uh, pumpkin on Halloween. exhausting to my parents, and I think they were always grateful for any kind of <laughs> drama activities that channeled that energy. <laughs> okay. And how about you, Carol? Did you start out as a, as a little kid interested in drama and acting? No, not at all. I always wanted to be a newspaper man, and, and when I began here as an undergraduate at, at MSU, I started in uh, journalism. Uh -huh. And then I didn't like that, and I went over to English, <laughs> and, uh, uh, then, and, and then started doing plays here at the University Theatre. Mm -hmm. But even, uh, even in Ireland, where I finished college, I, I wanted to be a newspaper man. But I was offered a part in a professional play, and I took it, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, fell in love with, um, with the theatre. Mm -hmm. And I've never got back to what I wanted to do in the first place. Do you find being married to each other and both very interested in theater that it's been worked for you uh, most of the time that you both understand what each other's going through having this background as you've had it? I don't think we understand each other at all. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you have to say about that, man? I think that uh, <laughs> remark points up the fact of what a patient, 
<laughs> sensitive, long-suffering lady I've always been. No, um, <laughs> uh, I think you realize that one of the great ingredients for any marriage is uh, an ability to laugh and not take things too important, uh, with too much of an importance. I really think that's important, don't you think so, Norma? Absolutely, and you've given me lots of laughs this <laughs> afternoon. We want to thank you both for stopping by in your busy schedule and talking with us. Carol and Nancy O'Connor, originally from Missoula, originally from New York, home for homecoming at the university. And reporting for Today in Montana, this is Norm Ashby in Missoula. Hi. <laughs> that was super. Now you've done this with that. No, don't do that. This is the Thunder Woman, the great holy person of the Blackfeet tribe. This will be in the